Today we're taking a look at my 10 best tips for building excellent Airtable interfaces. They are mostly beginner tips, but we're gonna go into slightly more advanced stuff for maybe intermediate level users. Without any further ado, let's go. Tip number one, a clean, solid, database is always the foundation of a great interface. Well, basically the thing that you start with should be your data. As you can see here in this example, I have a garage project for one of our trainees. I've already set up a very good foundation for the interface that I'm about to build. If you're not sure how to build a good database design, ask ChatGPT. You don't really need an expert to tell you these days at, at least. ChatGPT does a fantastic job and we've done some videos on how to do that. So go ahead and check them out. I've left them down in the description below. If you have a great database, you most likely will have an easier job of achieving a great interface. Time for tip number two. Figure out who you're going to build this interface for before you build it. If we take this example, let's say we're building a internal tool for the garage staff, like the people in the office who handle appointments, etc. It's important for us to understand the processes that these people currently follow, what is wrong with them, what would be some of the ideal outcomes for these people. And sometimes people get so absorbed in their day-to-day -day work that they don't even know anything better. They feel like what they're doing is the best that they can have. Sometimes when you're an expert, you can actually make some very valid suggestions as to what could be done. But at the end of the day, take a look at what they're doing, take a look at where they're struggling, some of the most annoying bits of their work, of the day-to-day -day work, and see if you can get some ideas of how they think their life could improve. And tip number three is all about crude. Create, read, update, delete. When you're building interfaces, that is the number one thing that you should really prioritize. How does my user create records, read records, update records, and delete records? As you can see, I've already made a decent start. One of the ways that I usually begin building my interfaces is by focusing on read. How do my users read records? I don't care about how they update them. I don't care about how they create them. I just focus on reading. And one of the easiest ways to get started is by creating a new interface. So let's call this interface next. And I usually just start with lists because uh, lists, the first option over here, it really is the easiest way to get a hold of a record. So when I'm looking for a record, when I want to read a record, begin with lists, just press next, pick your table, let's say mechanics and finish. This way you're starting off on the right foot, I would say. When it comes to creating, let's say we've organized all of our lists and everything looks okay and we can get a hold of data via filtering, grouping, sorting, etc., searching. How do we then create? And what are some of the most interesting things about create? When it comes to creating records, it all really comes down to forms. I'm just going to go through over here and press add records through a form. And now we have our first button. Let's edit the form. And as you can see, this looks a little bit Nah. What I would suggest that we can do here, we could start making this interface a little bit prettier for the eyes. Again, how does it read, right? Yes, I'm working on the creation of a record, process of creating a record, the process of a user creating a record rather, but still I care a lot about the experience. So for instance here, I'm just putting all my fields in a tidy little order. And the more compact it is, the nicer it is because the longer the list, the more real estate it kind of takes from your eyes. These are just some things to inspire you to build interfaces that are easy and sexy and fun to use. Tip number four, fewer fields, fewer clicks. Now I'm sure you're familiar with the expression on the internet that goes something like, if you want to get the right answer on the internet is not to actually ask a question, but really post the wrong answer. So the same thing applies when building interfaces. Basically, if your users are reviewing what you've built, add less information to the interface that you're building, whether that's a list, whether that's a uh, detail view, as we're about to see here, add less information. Let them dictate what they want on the screen. Usually start with something, maybe fewer fields, and let them add 
things that they find are missing for them. Tip number five is about previewing your work in terms of different screen sizes, because not everybody is going to be using interfaces on a laptop or on a bigger screen. This is how I do it. I think there's other ways to do this, but usually what I do is I use inspect within my browser. I'm using Chrome at this point. All I have to do here is just right click and press inspect. When we click on this little icon over here on the left, we are now able to simulate other screen sizes. You can also zoom in, you could simulate what it looks like on a phone. This should also govern how you think about your interfaces because not everybody's gonna be using it the same way. Maybe you need to have slightly different field sets. Maybe you need to rearrange your fields in a different way. It's just checking that your work will apply to people who use smaller screens, especially smaller screens as compared to large 27 inch uh, monitors. Tip number six, mastering filtration and a conditional visibility. This is a really big deal. I would really pay attention to this. First of all, let's talk about filters. When I say filters, I kind of mean filters within my lists. Here we have one list of customers and what you could do, you could use user filters based on elements. So here we could have one tab that's all customers and you can just keep adding tabs. Each tab can have its own filter by. So it's really good to use this for quick uninterrupted workflows. You want to take a look at clients who have pending orders, click on that tab, pending clients or something like that. That's the first part of the tip. Use filters. They are usually very good ways to speed up the day-to-day -day tasks. Now, I want to also talk about and actually demonstrate the conditional visibility tricks that we could employ. For instance, we have a client here, Rachel Tame. Let's say I only want to see these client details only when I need them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into data, I already have this simple checkbox called view details. All I have to do is just jump into my interface, open up one of these records, add to my list view details, and I'm just going to put it over here on the side. Make sure that it's editable, and I'm going to set the visibility filters of this group to only show when view details is checked. Perfect. So now we can't see it. If I click it, voila! How cool is that? Now, it goes further than this because you can do the same thing for uh, requiring certain fields. So let's say we have the client's email, but as soon as we have the client's email, we can make the phone be required. You have to be like on a different Airtable plan to do mandatory conditional requirement of certain inputs. And correct me if I'm wrong on this, I just don't remember 100%, but use this. This is a very important part of building Airtable interfaces. Tip number seven is to always keep your users in the loop when there's an automation happening behind the scenes. Here's an example that I've come up with. We have our appointment for the Tesla toaster. We have to notify the client that the appointment is completed. We want to notify them. We want to send them a text or something like that. We press the button, notify client. The system is telling us starting up and there's like a little timestamp. Notification sent. That lets the user know something is happening behind the scenes and that the system is working and he could rest assured that notification has been sent. How did I set this up, you might ask? Very easy. Let's go into data. All it took was really two fields, one checkbox, notify client, and the notification status, the notify client status, just a long text. In my automation, the way that I've set this up is that my trigger is, you know, when the notify client checkbox is checked, I then update that same record with starting up and the actual runtime of that automation. I run a script that sends the notification and then I subsequently send yet another notification, not notification. I basically update that same record with notification sent. That way you will save yourself so much headache and so many questions and the users will learn to trust the system more and more and more the more they use it. Tip number eight is learn to use buttons. I must admit, I'm not a huge fan of the amount of things that you can do with Airtable's buttons as compared to NoLoco or Softer, a bunch of other third-party interfaces for Airtable. However, I digress. Airtable buttons are also not that bad. Personally, I really love to use buttons to trigger 
automations. So let's see if we can change this notify client instead of being a checkbox, it being a button. Let's go ahead, add button. I'm going to try and change this to do a different thing. And let's see if we can go run automation. Perfect. Which automation? The automation has an incompatible trigger type. So I have to run back to that automation. Okay, I have to create a brand new automation. There we go. So brand new automation. Heal when button is clicked. Interfaces. Okay, cool. There we go. Automation. There you go. So automation is not deployed. Turn it on. Yes, I have to. There you go. Turn it on. So now our notification will be sent via this button. There you go. I just clicked it. It's in progress. Notification sent. And that's it. Time for tip number nine. Charts come last. Make sure that your database is set up well. Make sure that the users are happy with how the system works and they find value in it as compared to what they've known so far. Maybe they are moving to Airtable interfaces from Excel, or maybe they're moving from Airtable grid using the data pages to interfaces. Make sure that everybody is absolutely super duper happy and then start working on, you know, sexy dashboards with charts and graphs and whatnot. Tip number 10, and that is to basically make sure that you always keep in touch with your users. Just because you've built an interface today, that doesn't mean that your users as they keep using it, won't have new ideas. Essentially, this is your baby and this is your responsibility. Check with your users, make sure that everything's A-OK. -okay. That's how you build successful interfaces with longevity. Because technically, the more you use something, the more ideas you have of how you can improve it. You keep in touch with those users and make sure that they are happy. And if they have new ideas, go ahead and implement them. Or not. <laughs> but be in touch. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this quick little list of my 10 best tips for building Airtable interfaces. Let me know if you agree or disagree. And if you do disagree, you're probably wrong. So <laughs> let me know down in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.